Xiaomi Pad 6 is a tablet which promises experience very close to a laptop. How far did the new generation manage to go in terms of performance and user experience? Let's inspect. Everybody, welcome to the channel. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael, the Tech Mishka, and as usual, some cool tech to be inspected. Many people say that uh, tablet business is almost dead, but this year we've had the Google Pixel tablet, the OnePlus Pad, we are expecting a new iPad generation, and Xiaomi just dropped the new generation of their Pad 6 series, which looks strikingly similar to the Xiaomi Pad 5, but there are a few differences which, although tiny sounding, can have a huge impact. So in this video it's going to be a thorough review of the Xiaomi Pad 6, the maxed out configuration with all the possible accessories, and we want to figure out how good it is as a tablet, but also as something which can be quite close to a laptop or a PC equivalent. Let's dive into it. Xiaomi launched this beauty at $399 so that it costs less than some attractive Chromebooks and it's undercutting the price of the mentioned tablets by OnePlus and Google and given the many software customizations provided and available accessories, it sounds like a great deal. Plus, might be that it makes its way to the US market this time as well. A quick unboxing tour shows the good touch by Xiaomi. Honestly, I enjoy the experience of unboxing the Pad 6 a lot more even than the unpacking of flagships like Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Here's the tablet itself. My first impression is that it feels premium and is rather thin, and this weird feeling that it bends won't push it too much because I still want to make a thorough review, which a broken screen wouldn't let me do. But there certainly is a bit of a flex in here. Looking up the accessories, Xiaomi continue to play the role of Mr. Nice Guy and they provide a charger, a 33 watt quick charger. If you want to add some more accessories, here's the original case for the Pad 6, high quality, hard case and of course you can count on the typical for a tablet positions. There's the premium keyboard case which I strongly recommend should you want to do some more typing. Throughout the last two years, it has been the most invaluable accessory with me while traveling, especially after most airlines reduced the space around seats even further. The big difference is that the case for Pad 5 was available only in China, so I had to order mine from AliExpress, and now Xiaomi released it for the Pad 6 globally. And look, even with the keyboard case, Pad 6 remains very thin when you close the lid. Last but not least, the pen, a new generation, more precise, longer lasting battery and a bit bigger. If you wonder whether the old generation still works, I have some good news and confirm this. In terms of design, it's a tablet, you know. Xiaomi used aluminium material for the body, the screen is protected by Gorilla Glass 3, which is an evolution to the Pad 5, which just has a toughened glass. Very clean backside with the camera well visible and weight of just below 500 grams. Since I uncautiously have moved towards talking about the specs, let's go for them. Snapdragon 870 is the system on a chip. You can choose 6 or 8 GB of RAM, 128 GB or 256 GB of storage. The display is LCD, 144Hz refresh rate, 11 inches, there's a 13MP main camera, an 8MP front camera, a fairly large battery with quick charging support, USB 3.2 and it runs Android 13 at launch with Xiaomi's MIUI 14 interface. A lot of numbers and interesting facts related to the Pad 6 and so far it all sounds great, but what hides behind all of these numbers? As a starter, we get a confirmation that Xiaomi managed to upgrade each and every possible thing in terms of hardware as compared to the Pad 5, which is of course great news. In terms of a processor inside, we count on the Snapdragon 870, which although not the latest and greatest, has been backing most of the smartphone flagships a couple of years ago. We expect nothing but great performance and are about to confirm this through some benchmarking and tests. In terms of display, we have a fairly large, very bright and vivid display. That's an LCD panel, it's not an AMOLED, something very typical for the tablets of this price niche. And if we look at the competition, iPad Air, the Google Pixel tablet, the OnePlus Pad, they all have LCD displays, with Xiaomi and OnePlus going a bit further by offering 144Hz refresh rate. And that's awesome news, especially if you enjoy playing games on a tablet. 
The uh, other change, which in my opinion is the most significant over here, that's the upgraded USB port. It's now USB 3.2 with video output capability. So I guess with everything said so far, you have plenty of questions like how good is the performance? How long can the battery last? Is gaming experience as good as promised? And most importantly, can we really connect an external monitor? So let's keep on inspecting. I'm going to start with the obvious. A large screen, excellent pixel density, very good viewing angles, the display is tuned to perfection and if you often hear the myth about iPad's top-notch displays, this one is in my opinion among the best in this price niche. Xiaomi Pad 6 is fantastic for any kind of work that you need to do on a screen bigger than a smartphone, comes very close to the user experience of a basic laptop. I've spent countless hours on my Pad 5 with the keyboard and I'm certain it's going to be the exactly same case with Pad 6 too. It's just a brilliant combination. Price-wise, the keyboard is slightly more expensive than what I hoped for, but it's totally worth the money. The case attaches magnetically and when you place it on a stand, it switches to keyboard input. It's yet another practical enhancement from Pad 5, where I sometimes have to repeat the procedure two or three times in order the pogo connector to properly detect the presence of the keyboard. If you're often using a stylus, well, it still doesn't have its dedicated space on the case, but may magnetically attach to the upper side of the tablet, which is still something not too practical should you want to carry inside a backpack, though. The new addition is quite exciting. Xiaomi promised that a one-minute charge is enough for up to seven hours of using it, and is a lot more sensitive than the older generation. There is no way to skip the gaming tests. Such a big display with temptingly high resolution, it's lovely. Big battery means almost no restrictions about the refresh rate, so you can truly enjoy most titles supporting 120Hz and above. Driving a car on Real Racing 3 is a pleasure. I've never thought the tablet experience is gonna be so addictive. With some other games like Call of Duty, it takes more time to get used to the bigger area and the controls, but when it becomes a habit, the feeling is also great. You can play almost any kind of a game that you want regardless of the system requirements. Performance is stellar, as mentioned, it's a high-end octa-core processor by Qualcomm, paired with DDR5 memory, which is the key for the better-than-expected performance. If you wonder about throttling, it's not something that will easily occur here because of the optimal cooling solution implemented. You can see the result of a 15-minute stress test with the case attached. Even if throttling occurs, it's gonna slightly affect the performance and the system recovers back to full power mode in just a short period of time. The camera discussion, I guess it's gonna be boring because that's at the end of the day a tablet. And over here we have the front camera. It's an 8-megapixel camera and it's more interesting because it's the one that you're most likely going to often use for teleconferences or probably speaking to people over social media platforms. Thing is that it has the very same weakness as what we get with other Xiaomi smartphones of this year. It only supports up to 1080p in terms of video resolution, which is not bad but not great, but for most uh, applications when you do video conferencing, I would say it's good enough. The rear camera, it's pretty basic, 13 megapixels. Photos, I, I would say they are acceptable and probably if you want to be like those weird tourists taking photos with a tablet, you can do it. I would recommend using a smartphone for taking photos because most likely it has a lot better camera and use the Xiaomi Pad 6 for the photo editing part. Yeah, if you go for any of the popular photo editing products like Lightroom, man, that's fast. And I'd usually prefer a touchscreen as opposed to the desktop setup at home. You can do photo editing and basic video editing literally anywhere. Concerning multimedia, I didn't say much about the speakers, so here's a sample to get a glimpse of the sound. Both Dolby Vision and Atmos certifications are present. Storage inside is UFS 3.1 and combined with a fast USB standard, yeah, transfers happen almost instantaneously. Wi-Fi speeds are amazing as well. Speaking of wireless transfers, there's a special display mirroring feature supported by Xiaomi 13th generation. 
Another awesome trick, which I guess remains unappreciated, get a dongle, that's not a me dongle, you can connect a keyboard and a mouse and a display and voila, here's your portable, easy to use desktop setup. Not as capable as Samsung DeX, but has the potential to get there because this tablet supports 4K 60Hz video output. It requires a high quality USB to display port or HDMI cable though, or something similar to what I use over here. But unless you go for the original Mi accessory, I guess it's one of those test and try on your own features as there is no official statement by Xiaomi what exactly is supported. The battery life is, as expected, not a topic you would be too concerned about, trying to say that given the capacity, plenty of hours of web browsing, editing, watching, they're possible, and with the 33W charging, it tops up back to full fairly quickly. The software is also fun to use. I might have mentioned that the famous MIUI desktop mode is no longer something to be used, but most of the features are actually there. A split-screen option, floating windows, multi-window support, the mentioned smartphone link, it all goes on top of the traditionally highly customizable MIUI. You probably can recall my rants about certain MIUI decisions, but MIUI for tablets is a pleasure to work with and there's almost nothing I can criticize. Snappy, without bloatware, bug-free, beautiful, I don't even feel the need to use a different launcher, so in my opinion, the software is superb. Did I find any drawbacks? Well, since video out is now a thing, would have been nice to see Xiaomi providing a Type-C to HDMI cable in the box, the lack of 4K video support on the front camera, the lack of a fingerprint scanner, and the lack of LTE-enabled version yet. I think that's it. My personal opinion? This is the best piece of tech that Xiaomi has released throughout 2023, at least up until now, and certainly a device I can easily recommend. As someone who is a heavy Xiaomi Pad 5 user, I'm happily switching. It already feels as a good upgrade and an enhancement to the previous generation. And if you're considering buying this, yeah, as mentioned, I can totally recommend it. And uh, since I plan to use it on a more regular basis, in case you have other follow-up questions, I'll be happy to join in, in the comment section below, where I'm also expecting you to share your opinion about this new piece of tech. And if you enjoyed the video, and if that was well-spent time, I think we deserve a like, sub to the channel for more cool tech inspections. And if you want to buy this pad or find a way to support the channel, you can find more information in the video description area. Now, wishes for a fantastic day and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!